Great to see you here. In this video, I will talk about the present and the future value of money. We already looked into interest rates, discount rates, the compounding of interest over different periods. And now we are going to expand your knowledge related to what we call the present and the future value of money. Basically, money has a time value. And when we look at money we have today, we have a question, what will the, be the value of that, that amount of money when we look at it in five, six, seven years or whatever period you want to consider? On the other hand, when we have money that is coming to us that we expect in the future, in order to compare values, in com to compare investments, we have to know what that value of the money is today. So we have basically the first concept is what we call the future value of money. We have money today that we put on a bank account, for example, or we put in an investment, and we want to know how much that money will be worth in the future. The other example is the present value of money. When we have a project or we have an investment, we do that investment and we anticipate money cash flow in the future. Now, in order to evaluate how good our investment is, we have to compare the value of those future cash flows with our investment today. This means we have to know what is the present value of these future cash flows. Let's look into it a little bit deeper. When we look at the future value of an investment, let's say we call the future value FV, we have the present value, that's the investment we did today, and by putting it in some investment, we expect a discount rate, we expect an increase of value. And typically we have a yearly interest, divided by the number of discounting periods m and when we look at a number of years we can say that the future value of our present value our investment we did today is equal to the present value multiplied with one plus the yearly interest rate divided by m to the power m times m so for example we have an uh, investment where we are looking at monthly periods and will be 12 for four years four times 12 we will be looking at 48 periods but let's make it easy we look at the elements typically in the later examples when we consider m equal one nevertheless we still have to look into the general solution. And based on the formula we described of the future value, of course we can deduct by some mathematical manipulations the present value. So when we divide both sides by the interest factor, we will see that the present value is equal to the future value divided by 1 plus the periodic interest rate to the power m times m, m times m is the total number of periods. Basically, starting from the future value as a function of the present value and the interest rate, we can find an expression to discount the future value, the future cash flows into present value numbers. Now, we also have, when we look at these formulas, we can define what we call the present value interest factor. And the present value inf interest factor is, in fact, the relationship between the present value and the future value. It's, in fact, present value divided by future value. When we know that present value interest factor, the calculation can become very easily. So let's define it. So the PVIF, the present value interest factor, 
is equal to the present value divided by the future value. And since we have in the both expressions, we have the present value, so basically we can eliminate that and we find the term 1 divided by 1 plus the periodic interest rate to the power of the number of periods. Or we can say it's 1 plus the yearly interest rate divided by the discounting periods to the negative power n times n. And these are simple formulas that we can use. We can use them in a mathematical or a financial calculator. We can use them in spreadsheets programs. Now let's have a look at a short exercise using these numbers and we consider a cash flow of $500 six years from now and we consider an interest rate which is 6% and to make the exercise simple we say m is equal to 1. m is equal to 1 it means that we are discounting yearly. We will talk later about that interest rate. How do we select that interest rate? If we are looking at an uh, investment or a situation where we have a fixed interest or when we have a fixed interest rate, for example, on the bank, that's easy. But when we are talking about projects, we have a special way to select that interest rate. Let's now have a look at the first formula. The present value interest factor is in fact the present value divided by the future value and we know that it's 1 divided by 1 plus 6 percent to the power 6 and that's approximately 0 0.7050. I say approximately because when you would do the calculation there will be a lot more decimals and those are not always significant. So in order to keep it simple, we limit our result to four decimals. You have to see in your circumstances how many decimals are typically acceptable, but four is a reasonable number. Too many decimals doesn't bring anything and it makes just your calculations more complex. Be aware your calculators will contain all those decimals and a spreadsheet program like Excel only takes into account 20 decimals. But anyway, the calculations keep all the numbers there and you just select in the program how many decimals you want. Now we have the PVIF and based on this we can easily calculate the present value. And we know from the formula from the PVIF that the present value is in fact the future value multiplied by the present value interest factor. And now we use the present value or sorry the future value which is $500. We multiply it with the PVIF with 0 0.7050 and we find a present value of approximately $352. This is the basis principle of all the calculations we are going to do. The formulas will be more complete, more complex, and we will use those formulas later to estimate how good our projects are. I hope it was not too complicated. You will see more and more formulas like this appearing. If you have a problem with it, look back at some mathematical books, ask some help, or just write us a message and we will give you some additional explanations if necessary. That was this video. I hope you liked it. Click like if you like the video, share it with the people you know, people who may need it. And of course, if you're here for the first time, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and click at the bell to know when we have a new video. Let's continue in our next video and see what more secrets we can uncover related to time value of money and finance in general. Bye-bye.